Today, one in three Americans is 50 years of age or older. One out of every eight Americans is considered a senior citizen and represents almost 13% of the U.S. population. How will technology change the landscape for our aging society? I'm Grace Trafton of The Better Part. Stay tuned. Dr. Tracy Weiland is a global speaker on the impact of technology on work, careers, and women's leadership, and she's the author of 11 books. Her newest book, Employed for Life, 21st Century Career Trends, was recently released. Welcome, Tracy. Welcome back. Thank you. So this is the second of a series that we've been talking about on retirement in the digital age. And today, we're going to talk about retirement and technology. That's right, Grace. You know, the last time that we were together, we talked about how all of the generations really are contributing not only to work, but to our views on retirement. And how the baby boomers really opened up the options for us that retirement isn't a nursing home. That we have so many more choices of how we want to spend our retirement, what we want to do with our retirement, and be creative. Now we're looking at next generations, which is Generation X and our millennials, which are much more technology driven generations. And they're using technology day to day. And this won't stop when they retire, if they retire. Uh, and they will certainly help us open up even more options of what the choices we have when we retire. So it's pretty exciting that each generation has this contribution. So what type of technologies do you think uh, will provide benefits for retirees? So there's a variety. So if I think about robotics, artificial intelligence, big data, cloud computing, uh, mob mobile devices, video, you know, there's an endless uh, list of technologies that can just help us, sensors, you know, and I think about how many different technologies we have today that we didn't have in the past that can help us shape tech, uh, retirement in, a, in, a, in, a, in an angle that we'd like to see it go. Well, hopefully the seniors will take advantage of all this new technology. You know, um, you know, our boomer population is one of the fastest growing users of technology. It does drop off after a certain age. However, I'm excited that they really are enjoying technology and they will adopt maybe some of the things that we talk about today, perhaps not all. And a lot of it you have to realize is still in the future. Um, and so not all of us will be able to enjoy some of the technologies that we're discussing, but we certainly can see the, the progression of where it's going. Well, let's discuss independence and uh, basic services first. In our retirement years, we may drive less, either by choice or for physical or, le or legal reasons. What do you see as some of the alternatives to driving? Yeah, and that's a very good point about independent living. I think when I'm out talking to people thinking about retirement who are retiring, having an independent lifestyle is like top of mind. And one of the anxieties that a lot of boomers have or retirees have is about taking, having to take a driving test at age right, 80 right. or having someone tell you that you can't have your license anymore and not drive. What are you going to do? Well, there's already options, as we know, on the landscape right here today. People are taking Uber. I mean, I have pretty much ditched my car when I travel and do a lot of Uber, which is on-demand uh, drivers or Lyft. But in the future, that'll be even more, right? Autonomous cars. You're probably experiencing a lot more technology in, in your car. Well, eventually, you'll just be driven by software artificial intelligence, sensors, and GPS. And we know that Google and uh, Uber and a lot of these companies are coming out with self-driving cars. So in today, we can get driving on demand. In the future, we'll have autonomous cars. Now, the other thing is a healthy diet is very, very important throughout our lives. But maybe particularly as we age, how can technology assist us with our diets? Yeah, when you look at the opportunities in diet today, you know, it used to be that you'd have to get Meals on Wheels or some sort of go to a place to right. have a nutritional meal. Mm -hmm. And now you look at all the apps out there. I mean, you can order ahead. I mean, a lot of people order ahead their coffees or their favorite items at a restaurant, and you can do it for one person. 
Uh, Munchery was a very interesting app that I assemble across where I can get a, a gourmet meal for one delivered to my home for nine ninety five, wow. which is you know unusual in, in Palo Alto. But the whole idea that we can connect people to, singly, it doesn't have to be large scale, mm -hmm. to food and food sources, and it can be very customized and, and gourmet at the same time. So I think that's another you know. People today, our millennials and Gen X, are using these apps. So that isn't going to go away when they retire. They'll probably be ordering ahead and doing a lot of these on-demand food apps. <laughs> now, what if I'm homebound and can, can't get to the grocery store? What options are there? So actually, I'm not homebound, but I use all of these services. So I use Google Express. I use Instacart. That's where someone can go out and do my grocery shopping for me if, if I have a very specific menu. I use Amazon because Amazon pretty much delivers pantry items for me. And, you know, even clothing, right? Every store now has free shipping, whether you're going to Macy's or Nordstrom or Neiman and Marcus. It's free shipping, free returns. Um, so we don't just have to do QVC anymore. So basically, you can have a whole infrastructure in your home from your smartphone. And you can actually have a whole livelihood if you, if you were really stuck in home and you couldn't get out. Now, are these uh, food delivery services very expensive? No, actually, um, and there's a lot of incentives now, too, for you to use it. So, for example, with Google Express, it's a flat fee of $5 for delivery. Mm. It could be one item or it could be multiple items because basically the shoppers will go around to all the stores that you shop at. So maybe you need to go to a grocery store, a drug store, oh. you need to go to a hardware store. They do all the stops for you and then they drop it off same day. Oh, I see. Now, another aspect uh, of uh, healthy aging is staying socially active as we get older. That's really important, isn't it? Yeah, there's been a number of studies, and, and I, as I read, they increase on how important socialization is for quality of life. And when we think about socialization, we just think about face-to-face. -face. Right. But I think we can start to think about it more broader. And this is where I think our younger generations help us understand that. Just to take for gaming, right? The younger generation uses these large multi-scale multiplayer games. And they play with each other, you know, online. In, in They might look like they're by themselves, but they're actually playing with hundreds of people. And I'm sure you may have experienced it with playing with people solitaire right. or or Scrabble. A lot of my friends do the Scrabble. So I think that's one area you have to, you know, understand that technology brings social. The second one is uh, joining people together. So, for example, Meetup. Mm -hmm. uh, Meetup is very popular here in the Bay Area. Right. Well, there's senior meetups. So you don't have to just go to the one location. We think of the senior center as the only place where I can meet people. Mm -hmm. But Meetup can connect me with 50 plus in any of my interests. So it might be people who are 50 plus who hike, people who are 50 plus who bike, people who are 50 plus who um, you know, do like to go out to dinner. So I think that you can create a lot of socialization by using some of these online applications that connect us to other people. So are there very many of these um, 50 plus meetups? Oh, sure, so if you go out and look, um, one is many meetups by categories, but now they're even fine tuning it, right, to, for single meetups, uh, 50 plus meetups, mm -hmm. Uh, so that you can find more people in your in your like category of age. So the whole idea is that you want to be with a peer group when you socialize. So you have a lot more in common. So you can look for 50 plus singles, for instance. I, I'm guessing you can. I haven't looked at that <laughs> recently, but I'm guessing from when I look out at Meetup, there's like so such minutia now in mm -hmm. what you can be able to define in groups, uh, which is pretty exciting if you're really targeting the kind of people you want to socialize with. Now, another really important component of healthy aging is physical activity. How can technology help us with phys physical activities? So this is where I think wearable technology uh, comes on the, on the playing field for us. You know, people have the iWatch. Right. Uh, people have Fitbits. Uh, you know, people have fitness apps. Um, you know, so you can actually track and monitor how much you cycle, how many steps how much calories you've burned, how much of what you ate will be burned off by a certain time of day. So basically, you can actually monitor your own fitness, but not just with the physical activity, but it's also with other activities, such as, you know, you can monitor your glucose levels, your, mm. you know, your cholesterol levels, your carbon dioxide levels. There's so many things today that we can do on our own because technology is available to us. And it's kind of fun, too. I mean, I, I always see people in the gym now with their right. eye watches 
or their iPhones tracking things and, oh, just 10 more steps and I get another calorie off, you know. So are most of these apps free? Yeah, so in, in, I won't say them all, right? So the most popular ones eventually will have a price, but a lot of these applications are free because they're trying to build up a user base so that they can get ads, right, and, mm -hmm. and use it for marketing purposes. But there are some apps, more quality, higher quality ones, more in use, um, will have a small fee. Now, uh, what can you tell us about robotics and uh, physical activity? Oh, so robotics is really exciting because I met a, a gentleman who was paralyzed who was actually in an exoskeleton, which oh. was he wasn't able to move at all. And when putting on this whole robotic armor, he then could actually walk and move his arms. I think that's amazing. If you just think about today, we can replace most of our body parts, whether it's our hips, our knees, our elbows. Right. And all of this is almost like robotic parts that are allowing us to, to keep moving. Um, there's diabetic boots, uh, prosthetics, different things that will help us to continue our active lifestyle, even if we thought that we wouldn't be able to. And I think robotics is a big, big area to play in this. So this is going to be something that we can look forward to in oh, the know, future. Yeah. Well, in the near future? Well, robotics have been around for so long. But what's interesting about robotics is how much more intelligent they're getting, how many more uses that we're finding for it. Um, in fact, they're trying to get the cost of robotics down so low that we can have personal companions and dogs mm. or animals, right, that are robotics that actually can deliver us not only our food, our pills, but also happiness. Mm. So robotics is uh, in a very exciting area for not only medical and health, but also for retirement. Sounds very futuristic. Yes, actually, they're out there today. You, out you, there today? Yes, you can see these uh, robotic companions. I was looking on a show where a retirement community actually had robotics that would serve the meals was much more efficient than people. Really? I've seen them in hotels, uh, you know, robotic bots walk, you know, moving around, going floor to floor. Um, robotics, of course, in cleaning. There's so many applications for right. robotics. Yeah, I, I think I saw on TV recently a, a mail deliverer within a company, you know, instead of a person, human being delivering the mail to the different offices, there was a robot. Yes, and robotics can be combined with other technologies such as telepresence, so you can actually, which is video, so you can actually have, be present with someone like a physician, can be present with a patient, even if the physician is somewhere else. The physician can use the robotic and any bot to move around with the patient and the staff but also use the video cameras to be able to talk one-on-one -on -one with the patient. So that's more of remote tele right. telemedicine. So right, yeah, definitely. Now, just to change the subject a little bit, safety can be a, a concern, especially for retirees who live alone. Yeah, so I think this is the whole area with smart home. You probably heard or the internet of everything. Right. It was just blossoming before our eyes is we can have intelligent homes. They can monitor our heat. They can monitor security. They can monitor even our refrigerators to alert perhaps our Google Express to deliver our groceries without us having to touch a button. But even more interesting is we can use these technologies to actually track people. I think one of the most interesting ways um, technologies I heard of is actually GPS tracking for Alzheimer people who wander, mm. putting it in the shoe ah. so that we can monitor from a remote distance if my mother or father it has Alzheimer's and I'm worried if they're actually wandering down the mm -hmm. street and I can watch through a GPS and see where they're going. Mm. I think there's more, you know, the red button systems, um, there's sensors that can tell if someone has fallen off their bed or someone has fallen. So I think it's important to understand how much more sensors, smart homes, and Internet of Things will play into our retirement. So are these being used today? Yes. In fact, the physician who invented the GPS for the shoe for Alzheimer's has uh, a lot of what he calls NANA, N -A -N -A technologies which is just looking at how many different ways can we deploy technology so that we can actually keep retired people independent. And I think this is what's really exciting. Right. So if I'm living, if I'm not living with an elderly parent or loved one, uh, this type of technology can give me some peace of mind, I suppose. Oh, sure. I mean, even if you set up monitoring cameras, right, so that you can keep your eye on, and some do in the robotics as well, is that they're keeping their eye on 
the person moving around and did they did they lose elevation for example and mm -hmm. fall or uh, can we not find them or are they not in the bed in the morning where we right. you know say good right. morning mom we you know expect to see you there so that's already exists um, and the sensors of course have been exist for a while so we can you know monitor a number of things so some people wear something around their yes. neck so that if they fall you we see these advertisements about you know, an elderly person falling down, and uh, so they could just push a button. Push a button, you could push it on your phone. You could, some people have smart buttons by their beds. So the idea is that you can have a lot of this because of technology right near you in home, and you don't actually have to go to uh, a retirement facility to have that, that, that red light button that you need to push. Yeah, that gives a lot of people peace of mind, I think. Peace of mind is really important. Okay. House cleaning may be more of a chore than it used to be when we were younger. So what options do we have here? Because it's never been a favorite activity of lots of people. So a house cleaning is one of those areas, actually I love talking about it because you think about um, all the things that we hate to do, now we can have technology help us do it. So number one, wash you. I can actually have people come pick up my laundry and have it washed for me. Mm. I can do maids on demand, right? With a, an app I can reach out there and say, hey, I need to have my house clean today on demand and I can find maid services. But even more so, I use a lot of the robotic technology. So I have a Roomba. A Roomba is a robotic vacuum. Right. right. You push the button and the Roomba will go off and vacuum for me all day. But Roomba has even expanded. Now I can have Roomba that washes my floors, that can do my windows, and even do my swimming pool. It also does your windows? There have different, it's, it's, it's an expanded product line. So the idea is that you have robotics now that can be able to do a lot of things such as simple cleaning that you don't want to do on demand. But you also have, again, these apps and services that you can have access to in your local community to be able to help you with your cleaning chores. So I think you know, cleaning is off the, off the table in terms of having to use it in the future. That sounds wonderful. I have a friend who has a, a what is it called? Roomba. A Roomba. A Roomba, but uh, I've never heard of the window cleaning one. Yeah, so it's actually a, ro a robot that goes up and down on the outside of the windows. Oh. And then Roomba, uh, you can also use like a floor scrubber so it can do your floors. So there's, you know, lots of variations. There's also the Roomba that you can use for if you have pets. That is, uh, you know, super suction for yes. dog and cat hair. Yes. So there's a lot of, lot of different um, variations of robotics. When I think about it, there's actually um, a robotic maids ah. that, are, that were, are in development or at least on the market, coming on the market where you can actually program a companion maid to go around the house as well and help you with your cleaning. That's fantastic. I like that idea yeah. <laughs> a lot. Now let's talk about medicine and technology. How can technology help people with their medical needs? So, you know, Grace, this is a huge area. Not only uh, are there over a million apps today dealing with medical and retirement or health and fitness, um, but there's been such advancements in, in medicine, just, you know, using supercomputers, such as Watson, which is a supercomputer with artificial intelligence, to help us understand large concepts like cancer. I mean, if you can imagine, Watson first came on the scene as Jeopardy, playing right. Jeopardy. Right. And now Watson is digesting x-rays, prescriptions, information on cancer to help us think through, can we resolve cancer years in advance than, than before? Other areas, you know, having our own cells being able to attack cancer cells. Mm -hmm. So we have to watch that not only is technology making it easier for us with medical and fitness and health, but also just the evolution.